Hello and welcome to the lecture for part one of chapter two. So when I feel that lectures are going to get a bit too long for a particular chapter, I'll break them into parts so that none of these lectures are longer than 15, 20 minutes. So in this portion of the lecture for chapter two, I'm going to talk about the first two learning objectives. So about how we use accounts to record transactions and a little bit about double entry accounting. In the next section, I'll talk about posting journal entries to the ledger, and I'll talk about trial balances and how to find errors. So this is a very foundational chapter. Everything that we learn in this chapter we'll be using in the following uh, chapters, uh, as well as in Accounting 202. So it's really important that if you have any misunderstanding or any lack of understanding about this chapter, to please reach out to me. So when we record transactions, uh, we use the accounting equation. And if we use the accounting equation like we looked at in chapter one, that would be really inefficient in terms of recording transactions in a real world business. So we're gonna do it in a little bit different way that's more, uh, more productive. So each accounting equation element is a separate account. Okay, so each account, and we have accounts like cash and inventory and supplies and cars and trucks and, and equipment, things like that. So each account is going to have three parts, a title, like I just mentioned, cash, supplies, so forth, and then a space to record increases in that account and a space to record decreases in that account. So a group of accounts is called a ledger. Think of it like a three ring binder where each page in the binder is a different account. And we would take that binder, the general ledger off the shelf and flip to the page that's relevant and record increases and decreases. We would at the very beginning of that binder, we'd have a listing of all the accounts the company uses, which changes over time. That listing is called a chart of accounts and it's gonna be organized by the type of accounts. So we'll have categories for assets. Those are all the things the company owns. We'll have a category for liabilities, all the debts the company has, what we owe other people, a category for owner's equity, the owner's claim on the business. And then we'll have a category for revenue, what we earn when we provide products and services to customers and expenses, the costs that are incurred in the effort to earn those revenues. So here's a very simple chart of accounts. So this company, you can see they've got uh, the five categories I just mentioned there and the leading digit for each of the account numbers pertains to the category that it's in. So one is for assets, two for liabilities and so forth. The second digit of the account number then distinguishes which asset it is. And you can see here they've got one, two, 14, five, so forth for assets. So the reason that you see some that are skipped there, like why don't they have account number 13 as an example? That's because they've left a space to add another account number in the future. In this case, maybe they want to have the ability to add notes receivable later. So this is a very simplistic account uh, or trial, uh, excuse me, chart of accounts. Uh, many companies would have a more complicated account numbering system so that they could have more detail. So this is just uh, simplified for this purpose. The one benefit of using account numbers I found in the real world is that you avoid one person calling something one thing and somebody else calling it something else, like saying debt versus liability or something like that. So here, if we're saying we're gonna charge account number 21, then everybody knows what account number 21 is. So one thing that's very important in accounting for visualizing how transactions work are T accounts. And they get the name because of course it looks like a T there. So there's three parts to that, to every T account. There's the title across the top, and there is the debit side, which is the left side of the T account, and the credit side, which is the right side of the T account. That debit on the left, credit on the right, is going to be the same regardless of what account we're using. That's a universal rule. Now there are rules about which side we use to record increases and decreases. And I'll go over those rules in three different ways. And hopefully one of the ways will make sense to you. So the first is I'll just tell you the rules. So increases in assets are recorded on the debit side. 
So alternatively, decreases are recorded on the credit side. So in this case here, this company had two increases in cash, one for 25,000 and one for 7,500, and they had th four decreases in cash, the numbers that are shown on the right or credit side. The net balance of these is a debit. So 25,000 plus 7,500 minus the four credits there is 5,900, that's on the debit side. We also refer to the side that increases for an account as the normal balance of that account. So cash has a normal debit balance, which makes sense. Now the rules for liabilities are the opposite. They record increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. The rules for owner's equity, in general, owner's equity increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. So the components that kind of make up owner's equity, revenue, which increases owner's equity, will increase on the credit side. Increases in expenses, which pull down owner's equity, are recorded on the debit side. And then increases in the drawing account, the money that the owners take out of the business, are recorded on the debit side because those also pull down owner's equity. So that's one way to, to go through is just what are the rules. Another way to look at it is the accounting tree. So the accounting tree starts with the uh, foundational formula, right? Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Owner's equity then is comprised of capital, money that the owners put in the business. So at the top line there, green increases with debits. So the left side of the equation increases with debits, the right side increases with credits. Owner's equity increases or, uh, with credits for capital going in, net income is a, a credit, and drawing is a debit, pulls it down, revenues are credits, expenses are debits. The way most students actually remember it, uh, well, let me skip past this real quickly, uh, is with an, a, new, uh, a mnemonic. So in this case, our mnemonic is dead clerk. And I, I posted a, uh, an image of a dead clerk that I found on Google image search. So I've got the T account you see there. And on the top, D is on the left, C is on the right. So debits and credits, right or left for debit, right for credit. And what, what accounts increase with a debit? Expenses do, assets do, and the drawing account does. And alternatively, if, they, if each of those accounts increase with a debit, they decrease with a credit. On the credit side, what accounts increase with a credit? Liabilities, revenue, and capital. So that simple dead clerk writing DEAD and CLRC like that on a T account is a good thing to do when you go to take a test or to have handy when you're doing your homework, just to kind of consult again and say, what are the rules there? So a bit of a practice exercise here. I'll talk about each of these accounts and say what, what type of entry would increase the balance in them. So in the first case, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, what type of an account is that? It's an asset. It's something the company owns, the right to receive future payments from customers. I know assets increase on the debit side, so we would record an increase in accounts receivable with a debit. Commissions earned, that's a type of revenue. That's what we get for providing a, a service to a customer. So commissions earned revenue increases with a credit. So we would record an increase in commissions earned by crediting that account. Notes payable is a liability. Liabilities increase on the credit side. So an increase in notes payable would be recorded with a credit. Patricia Meyer capital is part of owner's equity. It increases with a credit, so we would record increases to that account with a credit. Rent revenue is like commissions earned. It's a revenue account. Revenue accounts increase with a credit, so we would credit rent revenue to show increases in that account. Wages expense is an expense, and we record increases in expense. Remember, under dead clerk, that E would be stands for expense, so we record increases in expense with a debit. Cash is an asset. We record increases in assets with a debit. So an increase in cash, when we receive cash, we would debit that account. 
And then lastly, Patricia Meyer drawing. The drawing account increases with a debit because it pulls down owner's equity. So we'd record an increase with a debit to that account. So this will start to make a little bit more sense in the second part of the lecture for this chapter where I talk about journal entries. So you see how we debit and credit different accounts to record increases and decreases. So thank you for your attention. I look forward to talking to you in part two of this lecture.